I'm Frank Garza, and welcome to Here and Abroad, a podcast that follows the U.S. men's national team and their player pool across Europe, MLS, or wherever else they play their club football. Johnny Cardoso joined at Real Betis during the winter break, and I've just been amazed at how quickly he's integrated himself into the team and become a regular starter. On today's show, we're going to dig into how the U.S. M&T midfielder was able to get off to such a fast start with the club. We'll also take a closer look at why his skill set fits in so well with the team's style of play. To help me do that, I've invited Manu Colchon to join the show. Manu is a journalist who lives in Spain and covers Real Betis through his YouTube channel called 4231 FC. And now this conversation with Manu is a little different than what I usually do on the show. Typically, I have a video call with my guests and we record the conversation that way. However, due to some time constraints, the language difference between us, we decided to do this conversation through WhatsApp audio messages. So it may sound a little weird at first, but please stick around because Manu covers Real Betis day in and day out. And so he's able to provide a lot of good insight even through this format. Okay, so the first question I asked Manu was, why did Real Betis want to bring Johnny Cardoso to the team in the first place? I think that... It's so clear, and, and the main reason is that Guido Rodriguez, the best stopper on the team, will end his contract next June, and for this reason, Betis needs a substitute. On the other hand, the club's scouting department will have monitored the player and very fit, before singing him, that he was the best option. I was just really surprised at how quickly Cardoso was integrated into the starting lineup and how much of a contribution he has made already. And so why do you think he was able to make this impact so quickly? Normally, when players are seen from uh, other leagues, they need time to adapt. In Johnny's case, he had the opportunity to play quickly due to the large number of injuries that the team is suffering this season. And of course, if the first chance he gets, he gives a spectacular performance, it's clear that he's going to play a lot in Real Betis. How would you describe the style of play of Real Betis and how does the team use Cardoso? First of all, Betis is a team that has a very clear play style. In the offensive phase, they look to come out with the ball played from their own goal. Here, midfielders like Johnny are very important because they must have good ball handling. Then, uh, it's a team that can run fast on the counter-attack or uh, they can spend a lot of time in the opponent's half passing the ball, uh, looking for the best option through the center, on the wings. They have many possibilities. Then, there is the defensive phase. It starts with good pressure on the opponent. And here, Johnny, it's again important because of the enormous capacity he has to look for the opponent in his own half. If the opponent passes uh, the first line of pressure, the importance of the midfielders is very high. Doing a good job as stoppers and helping the fullbacks on the wings. Johnny does that in a spectacular way thanks to his great physical capacity. The USMNT usually plays a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, and sometimes they use a number six as a single pivot, but other times they use a double pivot. Has Cardoso played at all as a single pivot for Real Betis so far? Or you know, does Real Betis ever play with a single pivot at all? Not with only one pivot as such. There are many occasions when he plays with a more defensive player and a more creative one. Johnny Cardoso has surprised me in this sense because I see him as a very capable both to be uh, the only stopper, to play with a more creative teammate and to have more defensive responsibility as uh, a good midfielder. From what you have seen of Johnny Cardoso so far, what do you see as his strengths and what do you see as his opportunities to improve? Undoubtedly, his main strength is the ability to cover a lot of ground. He's capable of helping any teammate in any area of the field. 
The last minute arrives and he keeps running as if it were the first second of the game. It's crazy. I really like the way he plays with the ball at his feet. He makes everything very simple. He's brutal with the head and he has a very high winning percentage in aerial duels with opponents. Maybe it's true that with the ball is he where he can improve the most, but we haven't had time to look at in detail. But he is very young. He's going to be a top player. So Manu, I know you're covering this team day in and day out. And, and so from your time following the team and, and just being around the players, is there anything else you can share about Johnny Cardoso that you think USMNT fans might enjoy hearing about? About Johnny as a person, I think is very important. How come it is uh, he from the beginning hearing in Betis? For him, it's clear that it was a dream to succeed in Europe and become an epochal player. Always with a smile in training, doing the exercises well and everything in an academic way. Both he and his family are gradually adapting to the city, although adapting to Seville is quite easy, the best city in the world. Manu, thanks so much for joining the show. I'll make sure and put links in the show notes to your X account, which is at Manu underscore Colchon, and also to your work at 4231FC. And thanks to everyone for listening to Here and Abroad. If you enjoyed the episode, please share it with a fellow USMNT fan. I'm Frank Garza. You can follow me on X at Frank Garza 007, and I'll be back next week with a new episode.